Hey everybody, today we are doing a special episode and it is going to be all about alopecia. I'm going to give you all the education that I know about it and this is my Aunt Charlene and as you see, she has a spot here. It started out the size of a dime years ago and gradually over the years it has expanded to the size of a plum. So we are going to talk all about it today. I'm going to start with this beautiful collection rinse and I am going to get rid of her grays and basically refresh the color on her ends because it's the same exact color. It's golden chestnut. Now, as you know, with this Clairol Beautiful Collection Gray Solution, it is the only rinse that I know of that covers all grays. It covers them completely and it lasts a very long time. Um, so if you have stubborn grays, I promise you, Gray Solution is for you. And it comes in a whole bunch of different colors. So I'm just gonna go in and I'm going to make sure that those edges are covered, especially because that's where her grays really are. And now the grays are just basically match her ends. So let's start by talking about the types of alopecia. The first one I wanna talk about is androgenetic alopecia. It's hormone related hair loss, which is what my aunt Charlene has. We know it's genetics because her mom had the same issue just in a different section of her hair. It's also referred to as male pattern or female pattern baldness that comes with age. For men, it's usually a receding hairline or a thinning crown, but women on the other hand mostly tend to have overall thinning of their hair but rarely are left completely bald. There is no cure for androgenetic alopecia, but its progression is very slow. The next type of alopecia I want to talk about is alopecia areata. This is an autoimmune condition that causes the body's immune system to attack the hair's follicles, leading to hair loss that occurs in coin-sized patches. Currently, there is no cure for that as well. However, regrowth of hair typically occurs over a period of months or even years. As you see, I'm just going through her hair. Um, right now, I'm just tapping the area where the hair is going. I'm just thinking to myself, like maybe I could put a little rinse on it to help camouflage it while she's wearing her hair down. Um, and it's no harsh chemicals and rinses. It's not like if, you know, with a permanent dye, it's just really harsh and I wouldn't want to just put it on her skin. But I just wanted to see if it would help camouflage it just a little bit. While doing rinses, just make sure that you saturate those ends and get that color all throughout there. She doesn't have any grays on her ends, but again, since her ends are already previously permanently colored, I wanted to just refresh that color with a rinse that was the same color as her permanent dye. So, you know, just make sure that you work that color all the way in and, um, this color, this rinse kind of gives like almost like a sudsy sound so it helps like spread throughout the hair. And after you're done, just take um, some cotton, if you have it, and put it around the edges just to cause a barrier so that that hair, that that color won't leak down on her skin. Now once I put this cap on, I'm gonna put my Aunt Charlene under the dryer for 30 minutes with hot air. Um, that is totally optional. If you are doing your color at home, all you have to do is just put a cap on it. And if I were you, I would probably leave it in an extra 30 minutes. So probably about an hour and then wash it out. The next type of alopecia is scarring. This is hair loss that is in response to inflammation of the scalp. This form of alopecia causes permanent hair loss. It's one of the more rare alopecia types, but it destroys the hair follicle and affects both men and women. Here I'm just showing you our Set and Shield Serum. 
um, you're going to put this on before any blow dry, any heat style, because it's going to cause a barrier between your hair and high temperatures. And a little goes a long way. So you just want to make sure that you rub it all throughout the hair. Make sure you break that hair up. Get it all over every section. The next form is frontal fibrosing alopecia. Now this form shows up as a receding hairline and is very common in postmenopausal women. The hair loss and scarring on the scalp is near the forehead and also about 50% of people affected by it also experience a loss of eyebrows and in some case eyelashes. It's like if I gotta be bald, I really feel like I would wanna depend on my eyebrows and my lashes to serve but <laughs> In some cases get real and you know I guess you just have to enhance until it comes back or if it does come back you know what I'm saying but um I guess earrings is just gonna have to do until it does Now this next one I'm so excited to talk about because as a hairstylist, I witness it more than any other form of alopecia. And it can be avoided if we are just proactive on making sure that it doesn't happen to us. This one is called traction alopecia. Now, this is caused by physical stress on the hair due to tight hairstyles like ponytails, cornrows, braids, and sew-ins. This happens because the hair is pulled so tightly that they remove the roots from the scalp. Permanent hair loss can occur when excessive tension is applied because new hair follicles cannot develop. It is best to avoid hairstyles that cause too much tension at the roots. Okay, girls. Okay, fellas. So just be careful when it's time to style your hair. You just want to make sure that you are handling it with care and not pulling too much because once those follicles are destroyed, it is very hard and unlikely that they will be back. You know what I mean? So, you know, a lot of times I tell people when they come to me and their edges are gone or they have really bad spots from losing it due to tension, you know, I always tell them to go to the dermatologist and see what the dermatologist says because it's something that a hairstylist can't necessarily do. So today my Aunt Charlene is going to get a haircut because as you see her ends are really, um, they're just split. And, you know, her having permanent color on her ends doesn't help because, you know, permanent color weakens the ends. So we're just going to take that up a little bit. We're going to keep some of her color, but we're just going to take most of that damage off or at least as much as we can. Now, of course, I am using, as usual, my shears from HerStrandsOfHair.com, and I'm just going to go in. Me and my Aunt Charlene talked about how long um, or how short it may be, and we played with the idea of giving her a bob-bob, but we also wanted her to be able to put her hair in a ponytail when she needed to, so we just decided to just go with taking the damage off and making it nice and chunky. Now let's talk a little bit about the treatment of alopecia. Although not all forms of alopecia are treatable, for the ones that are, one of the main treatments is corticosteroids. It suppresses the part of the immune system that causes alopecia. They can be given three ways. The first way you can get corticosteroids is by injections. It's just a shot that is directly injected into the hairless patches of the scalp, brows, and beard area. 
the second way you could take your corticosteroids is orally. Pills are taken daily and it's in a very extensive process. You know how it is with pills, but it also has potential side effects. You know what I mean? Like weight gain, osteoporosis, cataracts, and hypertension. The third way to take your corticosteroids are topically. That's where ointments or creams are directly applied to the affected areas. Now, I am aware that, you know, steroids is not for everybody. I totally get that a lot of us don't want those kind of things in our system. So if that's not for you, you can try a more natural holistic remedy like aloe vera, primrose oil, emu oil, onion juice. Yeah, I don't know about that one. <laughs> it might work though. If it worked, I would go for it, but it's just like onion juice. Okay, cool rosemary oil acupuncture and herbs so you know if i were you i would just look up a bunch of stuff and just see what may work for you it's no different than just trying products you have to see what works for you because we are all different So as you can see, Aunt Charlene's hair is looking a lot fuller now. It's looking heavier and healthier. So y'all already know what a difference that trim is going to make. Here, it's going to be a little out of focus, but I'm just going to go up in the front and I'm just going to angle it a little bit so we could give her a nice little side bang. Her front is a little thinner than the back is, but um, I didn't want to make it too short. So sorry that's out of focus, but you'll see the effect when you see the after video well the, the after the ending of the video you'll see how it came out now i'm just pulling it out and i'm just gonna you know make that even with the hair that's in the back Now, most cases of alopecia are hereditary and age-related, and men are more affected than women. However, certain genetic and lifestyle factors can increase your risk for alopecia. You may have a higher risk of suffering hair loss if one, you have a family history of balding, which is what's going on with my auntie. Two, you're pregnant or were recently pregnant. Remember we talked about this in one of my videos, how after you give birth, your estrogen levels then plummet so low, and as a result, it causes temporary hair loss that's usually in the temple area. Three, you take prescription meds. Some medication cause hair loss as a side effect. Four, you have certain medical conditions, including diabetes or lupus. You know they just cause hair loss just by having it um what are we on number are we on number five i think we on number five um number five you have poor nutrition or a nutrition change remember my video when i trimmed my own ends because i became plant-based and my hair went through something like you know just changing you, your nutrition or having a poor diet can you know also cause hair loss so just pay attention to what's going on with you because you could come up with an answer and reverse it and reverse it quick now today for my aunt we don't want it super straight like pin straight and we don't want it super curly so i'm just going to take it back and bump the ends like <laughs> Remember that bumping the ends? I'm just gonna bump the ends and I'm still gonna wrap it um, under the dryer just to make it smooth. So we just wanted to have a little body and volume. So that's why I'm, I'm turning those ends over so hard. So that is my explanation for that. And I'm using my 22 titania iron. They are in route to us. So hopefully I will be giving you a date soon that you can purchase yours. Okay, so lastly, I want to talk about reducing your risk. Although we don't necessarily have control over most alopecia cases, 
the ones that you can be proactive on or reverse, you can reduce your risk by making sure of the following. One, eating a healthy, balanced diet. Diets high in raw vegetables and fresh herbs are said to help delay androgenetic alopecia. Two, eating more protein. Remember in my video when I trim my own ends, we also talked about this. Amino acids and micronutrient deficiencies add to hair loss. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein and hair follicles are largely made up of keratin, which is a protein. So that's why I use our resurrection mask so much, not only on my hair, but my clients. It adds that protein and that keratin topically. Three, taking certain supplements. Vitamin D and iron supplements, which I take every day ever since I went through that situation when my hair fell out from going plant-based. Now my hair is back and it's flourishing and it's full and I'm just so grateful and I feel like it came back really fast. So, you know, a few other vitamins I take too, but it helps you keep your hair fuller for longer. It's just best to consult with your doctor though first to see what your body may be lacking. Four, caring for your hair gently. Tight ponytails and other hairstyles that cause tension may lead to extra shedding. Y'all know gently is one of my favorite words when I do my tutorials. So also make sure if you have a hairstylist, they are treating your hair right. A lot of stylists say that they are hair care, but make sure they really are because if not, your hair will pay for it. And last, reducing stress. If stress is the main cause of your hair loss, and I see it all the time, stress causes a lot of things to happen to the body, and hair loss is definitely one of them. So just try to practice stress management techniques like meditation, prayer, journaling, yoga, walking, um, going to the gym, or just making more time for anything that makes you absolutely happy. So on this section, you see I didn't close the iron. I just hit the bottom of the hair because what I did was I wanted to leave a little texture in the root to help cover her spot. So it's just that the fact that the spot's going to be there, you just want to do little things to help camouflage it. So when my Aunt Charlene talks to me about her spot and shows me pictures i always thought it was like literally at the top of her hair but it's a little bit behind the crown which helps you know it helps it you know stay a little camouflage it, it's also scary though because with it being farther back if it's on your own head it's harder to tell if people can see it or not like if it's at the top i feel like you can look in the mirror and just kind of like fix your hair to cover it but with it being a little farther back, she can't keep her eye on it. So it's just important to do little things to help, you know, camouflage that section so she won't be self-conscious about it all the time. So now that the bump and the curls are done, we're going to take the glass brilliant shine and we are going to spray on her hair. This is in stock right now, guys, if you want it, deeperthanhair.com. And I am going to wrap her hair flat um, and I am just going to put her under the dryer with a cap on. I'm not going to use saran wrap or make it too flat. I just want to use a um, processing cap to help lay that hair make sure if you do this at home or at your salon to use cool air if you use hot air you're going to look like uh before the blow dry all over again <laughs> and you don't want that so i'm just going to wrap it flat with first i'm going to use a vent brush just get that hair in place and it also stimulates the scalp um and then i'm going to take a flat brush and lay well i clearly cut out the flat brush part <laughs> but but I've used a flat brush to lay it super flat and now I'm putting a cap on and I'm going to tie it just to help secure it so it doesn't fall. So now that she sat under the dryer for 10 minutes on cool air, I'm going to comb it down with a wide tooth comb. 
and as you see it's nice and fluffy it's not super flat to her head and we are just going to style it up it looks nice and healthy shiny and bouncy it has a little volume in it um, so I'm glad my Aunt Charlene came and got cared for today because self-care is, oh, now the flat brush wants to make an appearance. You know what I mean? Where was you at when we was wrapping the hair? <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just glad she came in because we all need some loving on us. And especially when you just feel a little helpless with what's going on with your hair. And I was so surprised when she's like, yeah, I want to be on your channel. And I'm like, really? You know, because I know a lot of people are really self-conscious about, you know, what's going on with their hair. And so I was just so happy that she wanted to do that because I figured it was a perfect opportunity to teach everybody about alopecia. I get a lot of comments about it. And I didn't want to just have any old alopecia on here. I wanted to, like, go there. So... Thank my Aunt Charlene and give her some love in the comments. You know, let her know how beautiful she is and thank her for, you know, allowing us to, to teach the folks today. So now we're going to take some aloe vera oil and we are just going to rub that on her spot. Like she likes to use aloe vera on it. Um, now that I've done my research and learned other things, you know, I'm going to get her some onion juice. You know, <laughs> we're going to put some onion juice on there and see what's up. So don't put a lot of, if you are using an oil don't put a lot like literally just a dab because if you use too much it will travel through the rest of your hair while you're wearing it down if you want to use an excessive amount just wait till you're wearing your hair in a different style that it doesn't matter then as you just saw that was topics topics is a fiber enhancing this is just basically grabs onto the hair your strands of your hair and it puts fibers on it the same color as your hair to help camouflage i use this on set when i'm doing hair um for tv shows and movies like the edges are always really thin on camera and the parts can come off very wide on camera so we use topic on set so i figured I get some topics for my Aunt Charlene to help her feel a little more secure about her spot back here. And I will link all of the things I use today. I will link them below in the box below so you guys can go grab some of whatever you need. But topics is a lifesaver and she doesn't have to worry about the wind blowing and people seeing her spot being bright. And, you know, she could just live her life fully without this, you know, burden because Hair loss is a burden for everybody, men, women, anybody. You know, people love their hair and rightfully so. So I'm so grateful that we could do this for you guys today. Again, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you learned a lot about alopecia. I know I did. <laughs> so I will see you guys next time. And again, thank you. And thank you, Aunt Charlene. She's not only my Aunt Charlene, she's all of yours too. All right, guys. Bye.